Hey guys, what's going on? This is Dane here, uh, back at the workbench, and uh, I'm going to be, in this video, straying off a little bit from the typical model train videos here. Uh, right now I'm taking a break from the model trains, kind of setting them aside a little bit to focus on another modeling project that I want to complete here, and that is my uh, Type 7 C U boat here. Uh, this is a Revel kit I've been working on for some time now. I think over the period of the 4th of July last year, I officially got this thing finished and put a primer coat on it, but unfortunately I haven't had the time to really go back and uh, put paint or any further detailing on this thing. Uh, I don't really have an actual U-boat number or anything like that established with this yet. Right now my priority is just to paint this and get all the detailing uh, done to it and then I'll move on to all the other kind of the, the fine things like uh, you know choosing an actual boat and all that later. Um, so what, what I'm going to be doing in this video is basically going over uh, and essentially painting this thing uh, I'll be showing you guys some weathering techniques that I'll be uh, trying on this that I'm very anxious about, honestly, because there's there's a lot of, uh, really a whole playing field of uh, stuff that I can do to this, which is pretty cool. Um, so I'm planning to, on doing a lot of weathering effects. Um, the paint scheme on these are, are pretty interesting. Uh, normally these Type 7 Cs had a, uh, three, three different primary colors. The deck was usually treated wood, so it would always be uh, kind of like a, a dark tarish color or a, kind of like a light brown. Uh, so I'll be having to do a custom color for the deck. Uh, and then on the sides of the boat here, it would be Kriegsmarine gray, and then they were, on the water line here, it'd be a darker gray. So what I'm going to have to do with this is basically three different colors that I'll have to mask all this off and uh, paint in different stages with my airbrush. So uh, I'll basically be showing you guys how I do all that and uh, you know just kinda go along here uh, and see what happens. So hopefully this video is kinda entertaining to you guys. I think it'll be an, uh, kind of an interesting break from what I normally do which is the trains and uh, we'll see how this guy goes here and hopefully we can get it done. So I hope you guys enjoy the next bit of videos here and uh, keep following and uh, I promise I'll have more training videos in the future but for now uh, hopefully you guys enjoy this project so we'll go ahead and get started here. Um, like I said the first things I did uh, when I got this kit was I built it, uh, I kinda looked at photos to make sure everything was correct followed the instructions, put it all together uh, this is a kit by Revel and though the instructions were nice they were all in German and they were kind of hard to follow and I think honestly a few steps were missing that made this kind of hard so in particular I believe the conning tower uh, I had some issues putting together the conning tower because of the fact that uh, there were a few missing instructions in the pap and the paperwork that were unfortunately kind of disappointing and would have been important in building this and since I didn't have them I kind of had to eyeball this I also looked at like kind of photos online of other people's U-boats that they've built uh, and that's kind of what hel uh, helped me get along here to build it uh, some other things like um, I, I did screw up one thing when I built this and I'll admit that right now the new mistake I did was I glued the handrails onto the boat uh, and I shouldn't have done this because I forgot about the fact that I'm painting the deck so what's gonna happen now is I'm gonna have to mask all around all of this paint the deck and then when all that's done then I'm gonna have to touch up paint the handrails uh, with the Kriegsmarine Gray, so that kind of sucks, but, uh, you know, it's not the worst mistake in the world, I guess. Um, but, you know, it, it's definitely one of those things that it's kind of frustrating. I should have left those off when I had the chance. Uh, some other things about the U-boat, I didn't glue the conning tower in place. Obviously, you can see I kept this off because this is an important part, and I want to do some detail painting, too. I plan on painting some custom emblems onto the conning tower here. Uh, so that's going to be a process that I'll have to do when, it come, when I come to it. Uh, but, you know, having these parts separate is important because obviously I don't want to hit the conning tower up with the uh, blackish brown color that will be spraying on the deck. Also the deck gun itself, the 88mm cannon, is removable so I'll be painting this separately as well. Uh, so basically what we'll be focusing on here is the entire hull and the entire deck here uh, for the most part. So like these are a couple things here and I'll go ahead and uh, take the camera off the tripod and kind of show you guys up close here all that I've done so we'll go ahead and do that alrighty so as you can see the entire model has been built and is pretty much ready for paint uh, some finishing touches I did to this before I uh, primered it was I uh, put some putty on the deck seams here uh, where the deck plates uh, where you insert the deck plates and basically level them into the hull here, the hull construction, and I filled those joints in. You can see there's still a little line there, uh, but that's just uh, kind of the line that's showing up 
uh, through the gray primer of the white putty that I used. But I filled those lines in so that they don't show up as large cracks later on. So that's just one of those things that it really helps to uh, uh, take pains in your finish. That way, when you paint this thing, it all looks you know ten times more realistic instead of having toyish-looking cracks in between the decks. Uh, the deck and the hull construction so that's something I took the time to do. I uh, did a lot of putting on the conning tower too. There was a lot of seams I had to fill and do that before I uh, painted it. Um, overall I really like the conning tower though. It's very very well detailed. I love the uh, plate or the deck plating on this. It's very well detailed and it's got a lot of depth to it which will look really good once it's painted and weathered. Uh, the interior here of the conning tower as well is, is very very nicely detailed. Uh, so I'll have to shoot all the gray in this. I'll have to paint the wood deck or the uh, wood panels here on both sides. I'll have to do that and then just kind of, you know, detail paint a lot of stuff here on the conning tower in particular, which will be a little time consuming, but a very important part of doing this. Um, the deck here, you can see it's it's pretty well detailed as well. I like the, I like the detail level that it has. It's uh, very, very nicely done. You can see all the way to the back. Looks pretty good. Um, and then on the front deck here, everything looks pretty good. Um, the deck gun is pretty well detailed, though in the instructions it was kind of hard to follow them, and a lot of the hole pre-drilled holes uh, to insert the parts into were uh, kind of roughly done. So I had to go back and drill through and kind of re-drill the holes to install a lot of the detail parts. And I even added a, a couple extra parts that weren't included into the model uh, for the deck gun as well. Something else I got to do on the deck gun as well is put the cable, which is spiraled around the barrel, uh, and that'll be a detail feature I added in the. Uh, final stages of the detailing process of this boat and then of course once all this is painted then I'll have to put the cables running in between the net cutter from the conning tower and all the way back to these um, pieces here uh, so that'll be something else I have to do when the time comes which will be a, a fun but uh, you know a fun time consuming process there but uh, we'll get that we'll get to that when we uh, you know when we get to it so anyways Overall, very nice detail, and I really, really like the kit. I think it looks very, very good. It's very well detailed, and I'm happy how it uh, it turned out. I think it came out pretty good, honestly. Uh, but like I said, I can't wait to especially get into the weathering, which I think will be a lot of fun, and I'll definitely show you guys that when we get to it. There will be a lot of fun effects I can do to this here. So for now, we'll go ahead and get into the painting process here. And like I said, the conning tower is removable, so this will be set aside for painting as well, and the deck gun will also be removed for the painting process and we'll just basically be focusing on the entire hull and deck portion of the boat as well. Uh, so the first thing I like, I would recommend here if you're going to do a painting project like this is make sure your workbench is clear of any kind of debris. Even though we're going to be putting a lot of, uh, I'm going to be putting newspaper over my entire uh, desk here. That way there's no overspray that gets on this or anything. Um, and it's important that you clean all the dust up and anything like that because believe me, if you, once you start getting the airbrush going, a lot of that dust will be floating around the air and it just likes to get all over everything once it's, you know, moving around. Uh, so it's very important to take a sweeper or something like that, sweep off your entire desk area, workshop area, whichever, make sure it's all nice and clean and then put your newspaper down or your paint booth or whatever you're using to do this and uh, you know make sure everything's covered up so you don't you can avoid any kind of overspray on like your uh, desk or anything else so that's what I'm gonna be doing here uh, since I don't have a paint booth right now and I, I don't have any other available space in this apartment um, I'm gonna be just having to do it here right on my workbench so I'm gonna make sure that I get all of this covered I might even put some uh, newspaper kind of folded up here on these um, drawers here as well and I'll in a minute here I'm going to put away these models as well just to make sure that there's no paint or dust that gets on these as well since they're finished models. And uh, we'll just go from here. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the deck. And I'll show you guys how to mix the colors for this as well. And I'm doing this all off of uh, prototype photos as well which are very helpful. Um, so I'll be doing that here and I'll show you guys here. So we'll go ahead and uh, I'll go ahead and get the workbench cleaned off, get it covered up and we'll get ready for the painting process. Okay, so you can see everything is covered up, and I just put two layers of paper on this, and then masked, uh, put some uh, blue painter's tape down to kind of secure the paper so it's not going to blow around once I get the airbrush going here. And you can see it just covers most of my air, uh, workbench here, and it's pretty much ready uh, to put the U-boat back on in uh, the painting process. So what we'll do now is I'll go ahead and set up the boat, uh, take a few things off of it, uh, set the conning tower and all that aside, and we'll go ahead and start working on the deck and mixing the custom colors.
Okay, so the time has come to put the deck color on the boat here. And the color I've mixed together is basically a treated wood color. Uh, there's a hint of brown in here, uh, and then it's just mostly uh, charcoal gray mixed with flat black acrylic paint. And uh, I've diluted it uh, quite a bit uh, with 50% isopropyl alcohol. Uh, so it's basically in a dilution of about... Um, it's basically the consistency of skim milk, uh, something like that. It's very thin, and it'll spray very nicely uh, through my uh, airbrush, and this will be the color I'll use. Uh, any other kind of like wood highlights or any kind of further fading effects I'll do later in the weathering, uh, when the weathering stages come about, but basically this is the uh, starting color, and this is representing a treated deck, which they used a, a tar-like substance to treat these, as far as I know. Uh, so this is the color that I was going for, and uh, I'll try to show you guys a color comparison here if I have one. Uh, the color is basically like a, uh, like I said, it's like a charcoaly gray kind of a color, and I, I don't really have any paint samples here, but uh, basically the color you see in the jar is the color that's going to be sprayed on the deck uh, to give you guys that idea. So we'll go ahead and get spraying here. I'm going to put my uh, mask on and uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Alrighty, so we're pretty much ready to paint the deck here and I'll just try to be covering this as many angles as possible. Uh, I'm not too worried about getting the gray color on this part of the uh, boat either. Uh, just because, um, you know, I'm going to paint that a different color later. Uh, so I'm not too worried about masking or anything like that. But uh, we'll go ahead and just start painting this. And I'd say we pretty much got this uh, entire deck covered up here from the back all the way to the front here. And it's looking pretty good, but like I said, the key here with something like this is to cover it at all, as many angles as possible because you want all of these deck pieces and everything to be filled in, all the lines and all the uh, cavities and everything need to be filled in, otherwise you're going to see color variations in it and you do not, you do not want that, uh, no matter what. Uh, so it's important to fill all the other areas up like that. So I'm going to give this one more coat of paint here and then I'll go ahead and uh, clean out the airbrush and set it aside and let it dry. Here's a close-up shot of the deck color. You can see it looks very, very nice. Uh, it really matches well to what I've seen in the photos, so I'm, I'm very happy with that so far. Uh, but what we'll do now is just let this dry, and then I'll be able to uh, kind of start masking off the deck area here in preparation to put the blue on, or the Kriegsmarine Gray, rather. So that's what we'll be doing next after this dries. But you can see so far it's looking pretty good. Alrighty, so you can see here the uh, decks uh, had about 24 hours to dry now. Everything's uh, looks pretty good. It's a pretty smooth, even coat. Everything's covered, so it looks pretty good. Uh, so the next step here will be to paint the uh, gray onto the side of the hull here. And uh, I'm not going to worry about masking off the water line yet. What I'm going to just do is paint the next bit of uh, or the gray on first the lighter shade of gray and then we'll mask all this off and then paint the rest uh, on the bottom of the waterline here uh, the darker gray color so we'll mask all this off later uh, but for now we're gonna do the uh, light gray or the Kriegsmarine gray so I'm gonna have to mask off the entire deck portion here uh, I'm gonna try to mask around these handrails though because I do want to put some paint on these uh, so if I can I'm gonna see if I can try to leave these unmasked um, so this will kinda be a little bit of a tedious process because I obviously gotta mask around all this and then try to get the tape around all of these uh, struts and all that so that might be a little bit of a challenge um, I'm probably not gonna be able to mask entirely well around these hatches too but I'll see if I can put a piece of tape around there and maybe cut around it that way I can paint the hatches on both of these here uh, so we'll see what we can do there but I'm using um, scotch or uh, not scotch brand but a clean release by uh, duck this stuff here and uh, this is what I'll be using to mask the de uh, deck of the uh, boat off here so I'm just gonna pull off a big uh, strip here and I'm going to cut it to size and I'm just going to start laying this on the deck one little bit at a time and it's important to be patient here uh, it's, it's going to take a little bit of time to cover all of this alrighty so the uh, masking part is done here and you can see I've cut a few uh, areas out and I've left the handrails 
uh, unmasked. That way I can paint those with the uh, gray-blue mix. And uh, I'll be able to do any kind of touch-up painting afterwards since I have plenty of the uh, uh, kind of charcoal gray color left over. Uh, but you can see I've also moved it to a, another table here, uh, primarily for the spraying part. And uh, so what I'm going to do is we'll go ahead and get set up on a tripod here and I'll go ahead and start spraying. Alrighty, so the first thing we're going to do is paint the conning tower here. And uh, I've pretty much gotten the color mixed pretty well. And I'm just going to paint this whole thing first before we touch the uh, entire hull of the boat here. So I'm going to go ahead and get my airbrush and we'll go ahead and start spraying this. Alright, so uh, these are the results after painting and so far it looks pretty good. Uh, I think I got the gray just right where it has just the right hint of blue in it. Uh, so it looks pretty realistic and uh, so far looking pretty good. Uh, it took about uh, two coats to cover the conning tower entirely and it looks uh, pretty good like I said so far. Uh, so that's coming along pretty well, you can see. So the conning tower is pretty much done in terms of the base coat. And then it'll just be a matter of uh, putting the clear coat on and then just starting all the detail painting work uh, like painting the uh, gun and all the interior parts and all that uh, just so that it doesn't look like all one uniform color like this. Uh, so that'll be something I'll work on a little bit later but for now the conning tower for the most part is uh, completely painted with the base color. I've also hit up the deck gun as well. It's been uh, completely painted as well as you can see so it's looking pretty good. And again, there will be a lot of detail painting and some final touches to do on this as well uh, that I'll do here uh, later on in the final stages. Uh, so we'll go ahead and set this aside as well for now, and we won't mess with those until later. Um, moving on, I've went ahead and sprayed the uh, hull section, the top hull section, with the uh, Kriegsmarine Gray mix. And you can see it's covering pretty well so far. Uh, this is about three coats. And uh, they're just very, very light, even coats, uh, so it takes a little bit more time to cover this. And it's um, it's pretty thin, so it takes, like I said, a couple coats to really cover everything. But this side probably needs one or two more good coatings, and it'll be done. On um, this side, even though the lighting's pretty bad, uh, this side covered pretty well pretty quickly. Um, you can see it's pretty much done. The paint's just starting to dry a little bit, and uh, it's coming along just fine. So... Probably one more coat on this side, and or one or two maybe, just so everything stays even, and uh, we'll be ready to uh, call that part of that done and move on to the next color. So so far everything's going pretty well, and I'll keep uh, going here and update as I go as well. So we'll uh, go ahead. Um, excuse me. We'll go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and spray the rest of the color on, and then I'm going to let this dry for another 24 hours. Come back. Uh, we'll look over everything. I might have to do a little touch-up painting, like I said, and then we'll go ahead, if everything looks good, we'll mask the rest of this off and go ahead and apply the dark gray color on the uh, just below the waterline here. So that'll be the next step here, so uh, we'll keep going.